On the go, a John Deere forage harvester is a highly efficient cutting and chopping machine. But sometimes it takes in more than it bargains for. Pieces of metal, which can wreck a knife or get into the feed. The problem is to stop such nuisances before they can do damage. And the answer is the Iron Guard Metal Detection System. Available as a factory option for both self-propelled and pull-type forage harvesters, the system detects pieces of metal as they enter the feed rolls. It stops the rolls before the metal can enter the cutter head area. A magnetic sensor located in the lower front feed roll detects the metal as it passes over the roll. The sensor sends a signal to a metal detector module which then cuts off power to a solenoid at the feed roll mechanism. Here, a pole drops into the feed roll gearing, stopping the mechanism cold. At the same time, a signal in the cab tells the operator that the feed rolls have stopped turning. Total time elapsed? Just five hundredths of a second. Time enough to prevent damage from being done and to make it simple for the operator to remove the metal. In this program, you'll learn details of how the system works in both self-propelled and pull-type harvesters, and how to care for it. To understand how the system works, you first must understand how magnetism works. These are the two basic types of magnets, end pole at the top and face pole. The lines of force between the poles are called magnetic flux lines, and they cause two magnets to attract or repel each other. The iron guard system employs a face pole magnet. Move a magnet through a wire coil, and you induce voltage in the coil by cutting the magnet's flux lines. The strength of that voltage depends on the speed of the magnet through the coil, the number of wire wraps of the coil, and the strength of the magnet, meaning its flux line density. You also get voltage when you pass a piece of iron near the coiled magnet. That is because now the iron cuts the flux lines. This is the principle on which the sensor works. The sensor consists of two face pole magnet assemblies, each set in a plastic bobbin surrounded by many wrappings of wire. The bobbin, in turn, is epoxied into an aluminum channel. This to assure that the magnet assembly does not move relative to the coil. The steel keeper plate creates a horseshoe magnet effect, causing the top of the sensor, over which the crop passes, to be more sensitive than the bottom. The sensor is mounted on a stationary shaft inside the lower front feed roll. Both the upper and lower front feed rolls are made of non-magnetic stainless steel so as not to affect the sensor. If the sensor itself ever has to be replaced, it is set in place upside down, then rolled into operational position by rotating the hex at the end of the feed roll shaft. From the sensor, a voltage signal passes to the metal detector module on the bottom which monitors filters and amplifies the signal. When metal is detected, it triggers the feed roll stop mechanism through the relay module, which is the top half of the sparing. The relay module controls the solenoid. On self-propelled machines, it controls the electric clutch along with the solenoid. It also activates the red light and alarm. Neither of these modules can be repaired. When diagnosed as failed parts, they must be replaced. Shown here, these modules are in position on a self-propelled machine on the panel to the left of the operator seat. On the 3950 and 3970 pull-type harvesters, the modules are located on the left-hand side of the machine, forward of the fan. The position for both is the same for the model 4720 harvester, the only difference being that the location is inside the diagonal brace. From the relay module, the signal goes to the solenoid, which activates the feed roll stop mechanism. The solenoid is found on the idler mounting bracket near the feed roll slip clutch to the left of the cutter head assembly. 
the solenoid has two coils, a pull coil and a hold coil. When power enters the solenoid, both coils are activated, retracting the plunger. When completely retracted, it depresses a switch which activates just the hold coil. Finally, there is the stopping mechanism itself, consisting of two stopping poles and ratchet plates. During normal operation, the solenoid holds the spring-loaded poles away from the stopping plates. But when metal is detected, the solenoid deactivates. This allows the stopping poles to drop into the ratchet plates and stop the feed rolls. This action disengages the slip clutch. On pull-type harvesters, the feed rolls automatically shift into neutral when this happens. On the self-propelled models, the electric clutch is de-energized. On all models, the stoppage of the feed roll mechanism sounds an alarm. The relay module triggers the red light and alarm. Please note that it is deactivation, not activation of the solenoid, which causes the mechanical depression, thus freeing the stopping poles. This action then is similar to that of an air brake system on large trucks or railway locomotives. There, you might know, constant air pressure keeps the brake shoes away from the drums. It is when this pressure is released, deactivated, that the shoes are freed to stop the vehicle. And that is how the system performs. A piece of metal passes over the sensor, causing it to transmit a signal to the metal detector module. The signal is amplified and sent to the relay module, which passes it in turn to the solenoid. This deactivates, causing a plunger to depress, freeing the stopping poles to drop into the ratchet plates, stopping the system. We'll stop the program at this point so you can review the material presented so far. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. Let us now look at system controls. There are three, an on-off switch, a reset switch, and a lockout switch. The Iron Guard system's on-off rocker switch is located on the console of pull-type machines and on the operator's console of the self-propelled harvesters. The Model 4720 pull-type harvester and the two self-propelled models all employ an external reset switch. On these, the switch is activated by shifting the feed rolls. The 3950 and 3970 pull types have no external reset switch. Here, resetting is accomplished at the tractor console through use of the feed roll shift toggle. The reset function will be covered in detail in the operations section of this program. And then there is the lockout function. On all models, this enables the harvester to be operated without the iron guard system being on. On the 3950 and 3970 pull types, this is done with a lockout switch, shown here. On the 4720 pull type and the two self-propelled models, a lockout bale does the same job. On all models, lockout works by keeping the solenoid plunger mechanically depressed. And now that you've been introduced to system performance and controls, we're ready for system operation. Operation of the iron guard system is similar among all five forage harvesters. Exact procedure varies depending on the particular model. On all models, the key switch must be on before the iron guard system itself can be turned on. When first switched, the system comes on in the trip mode, which sounds the alarm. The next step, then, is to activate the system by resetting it. On the models 5720 and 5820 self-propelled, this is done by moving the feed roll shift lever into reverse to activate the reset switch, then forward to reset the system. On all pull types, this is done in the tractor cab by first moving the feed roll shift toggle switch into reverse, then into forward. To operate the harvester with the iron guard system locked out, that is, with the solenoid plunger held down mechanically, 
simply turn the rocker switch off. Be aware that on all models, the system cannot be reset while in the lockout mode. The locking out process completes a circuit from the metal detector to the ground. Therefore, the system must be reset after any lockout operation. This concludes system operations. Before going into the diagnostics, we'll stop the program so you can review the material presented so far. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. The Iron Guard system employs onboard diagnostics, and they're accomplished using the lights and test buttons on the metal detector and relay modules. No additional test equipment is required. The metal detector module has four power lights, one test button, and a test toggle switch. The bottom light is the low voltage light. It will come on and the system will trip if the power falls below 10 volts. Above that is the main power light, which will remain lit as long as the system has 10 volts. Both these lights monitor power at the same point. Above the main power light in order are the relay power and power out lights. Both these should be on during normal operations. This test push button is used to test the system. When the button is pushed, the power out light should go out and the system should trip. Pressing the button simulates a trip signal from the sensor, but it is coming from inside the metal detector module. This test toggle switch checks the reset coil assembly. When the switch is thrown, the power out light should come on. The relay module has one test button and three test lights. The bottom light is not used. The one just above it, the first test light, is the clutch shift light. On the 3950 and 3970 pull-type harvesters, this light will be on only when the feed rolls are shifted into forward position. On the 4720 pull-type and the two self-propelled harvesters, this light will be on whenever there is power to the electric clutch. The second from the top light is the solenoid light, which should be on when there is power to the solenoid. The top light is a reset light. During normal operation, this light is on. It should be off only when the feed rolls are in reverse or when the reset switch is open. Above these three lights is a system trip button used to test both the sensor and the two modules. When the button is pressed, it sends voltage from the relay module to the test coil and the sensor, which should trip the system. The three pull type harvesters also have an additional test button located on the side of the control console. This lets the operator test the system from inside the tractor cab. Let us now see these onboard diagnostics at work when the system is turned on, beginning with the model 3950 and 3970 pull type harvesters. When the system is first turned on, the alarm will sound and its red light will come on at the control console in the tractor cab. At the metal detector module on the harvester, the lower three lights will be on. From the bottom up, these three lights indicate power interrupt, main power, and relay power. At the relay module, only the top light, the reset light, should be on. Reset the iron guard system by shifting the feed rolls into reverse, then forward. The red light and alarm should now go off. Now at the metal detector module, the top three lights should be on. From the top, the power out, relay power, and main power lights. At the relay module now, both the top two lights, the solenoid and reset lights, should be on. The clutch shift light should be on only when the feed roll toggle switch is held in the forward position. The diagnostic lights are very similar on the model 4720 pull-type harvester and the two self-propelled machines. As with the pull-types, the system comes on in the tripped position, sounding the alarm and turning on the red light. Also, as with the pull-types, the same bottom three lights should be on at the metal detector module and only the top 
reset light should be on at the relay module. The only real difference occurs when the system is reset by shifting the feed rolls to reverse, then forward. At the metal detector module, as with the pull type machines, the top three lights should all be on. But at the relay module, all top three lights should be on. Also, of course, the red light and alarm should go off. The system should be tested each day to be sure that it can be tripped and reset. Detailed testing and diagnostic procedures are found in the operator's manual. As mentioned at the start of this program, the metal detector and relay modules cannot be repaired. If tests prove these to be defective, they must be replaced as whole units. It is unlikely that the sensor itself will need replacement. Similarly, its position should never need adjustment. The solenoid can be replaced if a test proves it to be defective. Also, using the solenoid, adjustments can be made to the upper and lower stopping poles. First, measure the gap between the ratchet plates and stopping poles to determine if adjustments are necessary. Clearance should be between two and one half and five millimeters or from one to two tenths of an inch. First, the lower stopping pole. With the solenoid plunger completely retracted, disconnect the clevis pin. Then loosen the clevis lock nut. The point is to obtain proper clearance between the high point of the lower rotating ratchet plate and the stopping pole. This is done by turning the clevis clockwise to shorten the clearance, counterclockwise to lengthen it. As stated, the ideal clearance should be between two and one half and five millimeters or from one to two tenths of an inch. After making the adjustment, tighten the lock nut and reconnect the pin. Adjusting the upper stopping pole is next. Loosen the upper pole clamp bolt and move the pole until the correct clearance with the upper rotating ratchet plate is met. Be sure that you recheck the lower stopping pole clearance after adjusting the upper. Also, be sure that both pole springs are in place. The Iron Guard metal detection system should prove to be a valuable asset, working as it does to rid the farmer of the nuisance and damage caused by stray scraps of metal. With proper care and attention, it will perform up to expectations every time.